Good morning, Asbury Church. What do you think of this stuff up here? Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I'm liking the pictures. I look at it. It looks like I'm in the mountains. Ah, oh, the mountains are calling and I must go. Yes, so anyways, uh, welcome to Asbury Church. We're glad that you can join us, those of you who are here in person, those of you on the other side of the screen. Look at that. The sun's even coming up on that picture. It's awesome. Anyways, uh, guess what? We have VBS this week. I don't know if any of you noticed. But Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. If you're, yeah, 9 o'clock. If you're helping out, be here by 8.30. We'll meet in the base camp. We'll have a word of prayer together and so forth. Jessica will probably give you some final instructions or as we live into the instructions. Uh, but uh, we get started tomorrow. So uh, keep all that in prayer, if you will. It's going to be a great week. be a great time together. So, so know, know that, okay? Today, before we forget about it, after a little bit, I'm going to invite uh, Kathleen Ramirez up, uh, our counselor here, and, and her intern, Grace. They're going to share with us this morning. And then uh, in between services, invite you to go down to D105. It's that last hallway on the right going south uh, and, on, and halfway down there, and you can see the room, and, and she'll show you around a little bit. It's, it's really cool. You'll, you'll enjoy it a lot. You can hear a little bit about what's going on down there. Um, Friday evening, speaking of VBS, we have the party. Now, this is not just a VBS party. This is an outreach party for the community called, as uh, Sarah put it, the Monumental Party. All right, we're going to meet out here on the west side. There'll be some uh, water slides and things for kids. There'll be hot dogs and chips and beans and drinks and fun things. So I encourage you to come out if you will. Uh, invite neighbors. That's what we're trying to do is reach out to the neighborhood. It'll be a great time together, so hope you can come for that. Um, during the week, just so you know, I know the insert does talk about Tuesday morning and Thursday morning Bible studies. They do not meet this week, okay, because of Bible school, so just keep that in mind, if you will, all right? I want you to be aware of those things. The other things you can read for yourselves, but sure, take a look at the Sunday brief, uh, the ministries that are happening, and of course, uh, with VBS, it's going to be a great week, so uh, here we go. I hope you're ready, but I hope you're more ready for worship, Amen. All right, we come to worship the Lord. That's why we're here, so let's join in prayer together. God, we come before you today. We give you thanks for this time that we have to meet together. Give you thanks for every person who is here in person and those who are joining us online. We're grateful for that. We pray your blessing on our time together, not so much for our sake, but for your sake. Let it be that our eyes will be upon you and our worship would be focused and pointed towards you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Julie. 
If it's convenient for you, will you please stand and join me in our call to worship? Come and worship, all you who love and serve the Lord. The young, the old, and the in-between. Well, this is God's house, a house of prayer for all people. And God welcomes each one who comes. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal hills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to Oh, 
Amen. You may be seated this morning as we now go before the Lord with our joys and concerns. Please join me in prayer. Father God, we are so thankful for the opportunity to come together and worship you here in this place and also online. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be poured out in abundance wherever we are. Wherever we're at, whatever we're doing, whatever state we're in, we are so thankful that you do allow us to come as we are. Because Lord, we know that as much as the world is a mess, that reflects who we are sometimes inside. And so we ask that you would bring peace and calm to all our members here, all of our families, all in our community. Lord, we ask for an awakening and revival here in Wichita and in Kansas, in our nation, and our world. Let just this little spark of Asbury be a fire that's fanned to flame in so many other places as well. Because we really want to see you glorified in all that we do and all that we say. And so, Lord, we ask especially that you would be with us and all our volunteers this week for VBS. Lord, give us all the energy we need, all the patience we need, and let our kids see Jesus. Let them experience him in such a way that they are a generation that rises up and has a greater faith than we have ever known. Touch their lives, Lord, in ways we could never imagine this week. We also ask, Lord, that you would move beyond these walls and be with the families of Wanda Ballou and Ann Willis. Lord, they are lives well celebrated in our hearts, and we look forward to the day we can celebrate them together. And tell them comfort those families, those friends, and hold them close with only the peace and comfort that you can give. Lord, we ask for hope and joy amongst our marriages and our families. We ask that you would just move in ways to restore us to a right relationship with you within our families, Lord. It's not necessarily the definition of family, but you being the head of every household. Lord, we ask that you would be abundant with those who are seeking you, with those who are looking to your will and your way for their lives. Answer them, move in their world, speak over them, Lord, or send others to speak into them. And then, Lord, we, just, we know that there are folks out there who feel like they are unworthy and unwanted, not needed by you. And, Lord, we ask that you would remind them that you use everyone, that you are with everyone, that there is nothing they can do to separate you from the love you have for them in Jesus Christ. And Lord, sometimes the words are that simple. You are loved because of Jesus Christ, not because of what you've done. And help us to speak those words and to witness to the way you have spoken that over us to someone else this week. Just keep it simple, Lord, but use us. Speak volumes over them with as little as we have to say. Because, Lord, you're so hard to describe. You're so hard. It's so hard to come before you, Lord, and give you all the praise and all the glory that you deserve. But, Lord, we do that today together from the bottom of our hearts. And we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Once again, if it's convenient for you, will you please stand as we sing, I Know Whom I Have Believed. I know 
please remain standing <laughs> and join me in this historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now I'm going to invite Kathleen and Grace up, if they will, at this time, who represent our counseling center. As you all may know or maybe don't know, we've had all sorts of conversation about counseling center this last year. Thought we were going this way, then we thought we were going this way, and we go this way, and here we are this way. And so it's just the way God works. And she forgot the microphone. Thank you, Dick, for bringing that up. But... Um, Anyways, we're, we're really grateful to have Kathleen with us and Grace as our intern, and they're going to share just a few words, so if you want to do it down there, that's fine, or if you want to come up here in front of the mountains, that's fine too. That's good, perfect. <laughs> we're nervous. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathleen Ramirez. I'm a licensed clinical marriage and family therapist. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, my name is Kathleen Ramirez. I'm a licensed clinical marriage and family therapist. I'm a graduate of Friends University. I'm talking too fast. Um, so I was here during the time that Wes was here. I'm just like quieter and kind of over in the corner. <laughs> but um, after he left, the decision was made to restructure the counseling center. So that was really important because we didn't want it to close. So it's now <laughs> um, restructured to be more of a nonprofit so that people can come without worrying about what they have to pay, whether they have insurance. Um, usually a flat rate is applied to them, but if they can't, don't have the ability to pay, they can come and talk to me about that. So this is Grace Alsa. Hello, everyone. Um, I am a student therapist in the Marriage and Family Therapy Program at Friends University, so I'm working towards my license so that I can see clients whenever, wherever. Um, I'm so excited to be here at Asbury. I grew up in a church, so this is my space. I'm so used to things like this. Love to answer any questions you guys might have. So we'll be in the counseling center after this if you guys want to come by and ask questions. If not, you're welcome to give either of us a call anytime. <laughs> Thank you both. Yeah, right afterwards, right after worship, go down and they're nervous. They'll, they'll, they'll be in their space. They'll be... They'll, they'll be glad to talk to you about what's going on. So anyways, we're thankful, thankful that you're here, and uh, we're, we're grateful for what, what the ministry is going to be and, and what it looks like. So Jessica, why don't you come lead us? We wouldn't be able to do, um, have the counseling center. We wouldn't be able to do VBS. We wouldn't be able to do our Bible studies. We wouldn't be able to do any of these things if it weren't for you um, and your faithful giving to the church. So I want to say thank you for that. Um, if you would like to give today, we've got our offering plates at the back. You can do so through our um, realm. You can do online. You can do come by and drop a check off um, in the office. All of those ways to give to support the missions um, of Asbury Church. Will you please pray with me? God, we are so grateful for you and for your provision. Um, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would just bless um, today, that you would bless our tithes and our offerings that you would just multiply them, that you would use them to further your kingdom, that you would use them in a, um, 
and a way to point people to you um, so that when Asbury is doing our work, they don't see us, but instead they see you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. You all know that song, right? I should never assume that. Uh, Rock of Ages, left for me. All right, just, just a, a little bit more on the, on the counseling center. We really, uh, we really do see that as going to be very important for us as we uh, really transition into new things that are ahead for us. As you know, COVID has really uh, messed people up, but that's not the only thing. By far, we, we can't blame everything on COVID. Uh, people are struggling out there, and a lot of the mental health issues uh, are, are coming from just flat out bad choices that are being made. So uh, we want to help people, and so we really see that as an important part of the ministry as we move forward. So uh, make sure you go down there here in a little bit and talk with Kathleen and, and Grace, and they'll be glad to, to answer any questions you have. I have a colleague by the name of Shane Bishop. He's a pastor in. Uh, East Fairview, Illinois, or Fairview Heights, Illinois, I should say. I think it's, it's close to St. Louis, and he's been pastoring at a church now for 27 years, I believe. Uh, they, have, they have actually moved through a disaffiliation process themselves and actually gone independent uh, in what they're doing over in that area. And God has blessed that church, blessed him and his ministry, and, and he, he has a couple Facebook pages. One is it's kind of the, one of his fun pages, and the other is is the Reverend Shane Bishop page about the church and so forth. And he gives some incredible, he's always ha offering these top ten pieces of advice and, I mean, just really, really good stuff. He wrote a book recently, it's been a few years now, and, and you can see the name of this book here. It's called Love God, Love People, Don't Do Dumb Crap. <laughs> now, <laughs> that catches your eye. It at least did me. As I looked at that, and I remember him talking about that book, and I saw it come out a while back, and, and it, it, it's made up of a bunch of short stories, actually, because it's all about the story, as you well know. But there's a lot of stories within that book, and it just talks about, you know, when we ultimately love God and love people, this dumb crap seems to go away. And so uh, just, just keep that in mind. You might want to buy it. Take a look at it. But lately, I'm not going to lie, I've been bothered by a lot of the things that I've seen, a lot of the things that I've heard out there in Christendom, if you will, uh, especially by Christians on social media. On social media. Um, Christians do not help their cause by saying and doing stupid things. Just so you know that. I think you know that, but you know, we all get there sometimes, and, and, and we all do that from time to time, but boy... It seems like we're majoring in stupidity at times lately. And we've got to do better. And so um, I was wrestling with this, and I was working on a particular passage. And, and in the middle of my sermon prep, I guess this was Wednesday morning, I kind of had this thought, what if? I'm going to throw this, I'm going to throw a bone out there. 
I'm, I'm going to throw a question out there on Facebook. And, uh, you know, kind of a crazy idea. And, whoo, wow! It's an interesting, interesting response. Here, it struck a nerve, obviously. Here's the question. What's the dumbest thing a Christian has ever said to you? That's what I put out Wednesday morning. What's the dumbest thing a Christian has ever said to you? Boom! My Facebook exploded. I'm talking within minutes. I'm thinking, whoa, this is interesting. And it was just ping, 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 all morning, all day. And, you know, I, I have it all shut off, but I mean, I could see all the notifications coming up and, and, and going, wow. Uh, 182 comments plus. Um, and so I, I, I'm, I'm wrestling with those questions and rest, uh, with the answers. <laughs> so I left Wednesday after I'd worked on my sermon, and I think I'd told Sarah and maybe somebody else, I'm not sure about where I'm at on this sermon, and Friday I wrote it again, and I sent Sarah a new PowerPoint, and we went a bunch of other things and stuff, and my sermon took another turn, all right? You know, I was reading, I was reading these responses, and it was like gut-wrenching. You know, the theological word I put out there a few times was, ugh, you know, is like, oh my gosh, almost at times to, to, to bring a tear thinking, oh my gosh, this, this is not helpful. Um, maybe, maybe we as Christians are the problem. Maybe we've become the problem, the hindrance, the obstacle to the true freedom in Christ that I spoke of last week. Remember from Romans 8, therefore, if anyone is Christ, no, no, no. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because in Christ Jesus, the, the, the law of the Spirit frees us up from the law of sin and death. And so I thought, man. And then I, I, I was looking on Facebook at some things and the chosen, you know, most of you read the chosen. And it's always interesting to see people's responses, especially Christians' responses to the chosen. And so this one guy, or gal, I can't remember, uh, responded to something The Chosen had on Facebook, and it said this. You might think you guys are funny, and your sarcasm proves my point. You guys have an ecumenical Jesus, and not the Jesus of the Bible. Well, okay, that's interesting. God never told you to do this show. I'll keep exposing, and you, I'll keep exposing you and, and you all just keep posting your material. Okay. Well, bless your heart. <laughs> well, and, but you see this. It's, it's interesting. Christian after Christian are typing this kind of stuff about a show who's trying to invite people into a relationship with Jesus. They're not, they're not heretical. They're taking a little liberty here and there, but they're not changing the message. And it just, it, it, ah. So the passage I was going to preach changed to this passage. So here's what I'm going to read from James 3, 3, uh, yeah, 3 through 12, okay? James 3, 3 through 12. When we put bits into, ma into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Whew. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Are, are you, I think you're hearing what he's saying, huh? With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Listen to this. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce 
fresh water. Oh, I'm tired just reading that thing. Mercy, there's some stuff there. You ever, you ever find yourself going bang, smack in your forehead? You know, just there's an emoji on, on Facebook or something. It's got this boom, this face plant type thing. And uh, where, where you kind of go, did I say that? <laughs> did I really say that? Or did I do that? When you think about this, this passage, there's this whole thing of, of taming the tongue. Did, did I say that? Another theological word you might write down. I spent a lot of time working on this. Oops. <laughs> There's another one. Oops. You know the oops. When you say it, you can't get it back. You can't reel it in. You know, if Jessica's doing a children's story up here, you know, with the toothpaste, and she squeezes it, and it comes out, and she tells the kids, try and put it back. They can't. You can't put it back. You just get all smeared with yuck. That's what we do. We get smeared with yuck. You know, when we say something, and we can't get it back. Same thing with like emails and stuff. Once you push send, it's sent. What don't we understand about World Wide Web? World. I mean, it's out there. I wish it wasn't. There's some things I wish I would have. Man, I wish someone would have slapped my hand before I hit send. It would have behooved me. <laughs> you know? You can't get it back. But Christians can be the worst at doing this. They really can. I hate to say that. You know, verses 3, 4, and 5 uh, talk, talk about this. They talk about horses, horses and bits, ships and rudders, fires and sparks. All right? And so when we think about that, you think about a horse and a bit. And this little, in reality, this little bit that goes into the mouth of the horse of a 900 to a 1,200, 1,500 pound horse, and this little bit with the reins on it controls the horse for the most part. <laughs> I've been on a few that took a little longer. But, you know, controls the horse. It's kind of an amazing thing. And then you, you think about how something so small can, can control or impact something so big. What about a rudder? on the back of a big ship, and you think, look at that in comparison, that rudder in comparison to the size of that ship. Are you kidding me? And yet you can turn that thing. And then you think about a little tiny spark that can ruin thousands and thousands and thousands, burn thousands of acres. A little spark. Wow. We talk about the tongue, and he compares the tongue to a fire, and we can't tame the tongue, and in fact he says... It itself is set on fire by hell. Ah! Talks about the small part of the body, yet makes the large, gigantic, big boat, the tongue. So we have this problem that we can tame a horse, we can, in a way, tame a ship, and even, in a way, tame a fire with, with the water. We can put out a fire, but we can't tame the tongue. How's that working out for you? I mean, really, I mean, to reel it in, Scripture says it is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Golly, come on, Rick, I thought this was going to be fun, you know? Well, just hang on. All right. But there is a problem there, and James is getting at it about this whole, this whole section, chapter 3, of taming the tongue. No human being, he says, can tame the tongue. Wow. So we have this problem. Then we have another problem that too often we are speaking from both sides of our mouths. We're on the one hand, we're praising the Lord on a Sunday, and on a Monday, we're cursing the Lord or cursing someone else from the same mouth. And there's this conflict, there's this comparison, if you will, contrast is the word I want to say, between that of the fresh water and the salt water. It's not the same. And the figs and the olives, if I'm going to the fig tree, would I think olives would be there? Same way with the grapevines and the figs problematic out of the same mouth come praise and cursing my brothers and sisters this should not be he said it should not be I remember talking with someone at another church one time and we you know there's never issues at church <laughs> but this just happened to be a day where there happened to be one and and the person shared I mean, you know we were talking about some of the things going on and and it had been kind of a tough go, and, and she, she 
quoted this verse out of the same mouth come praises and curses because I was the recipient of both both out of the same mouth from some and so I, I thought ah, where'd that come from oh Jane and and so you know you think about that and how we struggle with that and how we have to be so careful when my in the first sermon I was going to write or I did write had to take it off and all that stuff. In the first sermon, I was going to reference this passage, and I'm still going to reference a verse or two out of it from 1 Peter 3.15. And in it, it says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. That means to set him apart, consecrate. Christ is holy. The Lord is holy. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But notice, do this with gentleness and respect. When you watch some of the TV preachers, when you watch some of the internet preachers, when you watch anybody speaking, other Christians, how gentle and respectful are we at times when maybe there's disagreement? How's that working out? And in all of this, how does this reveal that we are revering Christ as Lord? How is it that we uh, reveal that, that, that Christ is holy? Do our lives reflect that? He says, Peter says, to pre be prepared to give an answer. I don't think we do a good job of preparation. We need to do a better job of preparation. For those times then when something happens, or someone ticks us off, or whatever the case is, or we get into some conflict or arguments, that we don't get caught up in the stuff. Because then we, we're just no different. Because it says to be prepared to give an answer for the hope. And if the hope that we're sharing comes across as in your face you're wrong I'm right all the time that's not going to be hope that's condemnation and you know for Jesus did not come to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved to bring about so the hope that we have to be prepared to give that answer to do so with gentleness and respect it doesn't mean be a doormat it doesn't say be a wimp but we have to be careful in other words here's the here's where we're at today don't be a jerk, all right? <laughs> I can't help it, but just what we got to call it. Don't be a jerk. Christians are jerks many times. It's, it's awful. We don't do ourselves favors many times. And if there's one thing I've learned in working through all the denominational stuff in the past few years, and in being a pastor for the 30-plus years or whatever it is, as well as being in relationship with those who are unchurched, it's this. Don't be a jerk. I believe, I mean, it's one of the reasons we were able to work through some of the stuff with the annual conference this year uh, in, in a larger context. To not be a jerk. And it's easy to tell that so many of us Christians are ill-prepared Ill to answer in a way that reflects that we revere Christ as Lord. We do and say the dumbest things that are more hurtful than helpful. You know, the Scripture uh, warns us about, regard, uh, about the tongue. There's all sorts of warnings in Scripture. And, and to put it like this, it, it would be like this. The tongue, be careful. Be careful what you say. Now, there, there's some verses here. I'm going to read them, but they're not on, on the screen there for you. But um, let me read them for you real quickly. Just a few verses. Because it's throughout Scripture. It's all throughout Scripture about the tongue and what we say. Colossians 4, 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. That means with taste, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Proverbs 15, 4 says, The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. People's spirits are already crushed. Why should we crush them more? Proverbs 15, 28 says, The heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. So if we would say things that are problematic, would that not say we might be evil because it's gushing from our mouth? Proverbs 21, 23 says, Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Calamity means damage or distress or disaster. Let's avoid disaster. Ephesians 4 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up. It's called edification, for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So 
so then I think about all this and I go back to the Facebook question. Here's the question again. What's the dumbest thing a Christian has ever said to you? I had one person <laughs> had one person who gave me a chuckle and the rest of them made me weep almost. But one person, I, got, I have a friend in West Texas. His name is Rich Stone. And he's, a, he's in Lubbock. And uh, he's a pastor there. And he and I have done a lot of ministry together since about 2012. And here's his question. Are you enjoying General Conference? <laughs> That's about the only laugh I got out of the whole thing. All right? So uh, I know Rich isn't watching because he's also pastoring or preaching this morning too. But I, I, uh, I, look, at these, I look at these responses and they're, they're painful and they're heartbreaking and they're a cause for anger. So I've got them on my phone here if I can figure out how to open it up and so forth and, and get to them. But uh, golly, let me, I, I want to read a few of these and, and several of these actually. All right. Now some of you who are watching told me you're going to be watching today because you don't normally watch or you're not a part of Asbury, but you responded and then you heard I was going to preach this. And so uh, my, my Facebook had questions like, are you going to preach this? Uh, I'll be tuning in and, and various things. So uh, howdy. Um, so just a few of these. And these are, most of these, almost all these people I know, one through various churches or places I've been, there's a few people who answered that I didn't know who I, I sent it publicly, but if it doesn't share publicly, not everybody reads it publicly. But one person said, I also, I was once told by a pastor that the abuse in a marriage is something that wives or husbands must endure because that's the way God uses us in discipline with one another. Now, friends, not helpful. I mean, if, if, if there's abuse going on, that is not of God. And, and for me as a pastor to tell you that it's okay and you must endure it, uh, shame on me. Shame on me. She has more to say, but I'll, I'll just leave that one there. Here's one. Ugh. When my sister finally got the courage to go to someone at her church years ago about her boyfriend being physically abusive, the response from the person infuriated me. They said, you must have sinned and earned it. She left God because of it for a while in church. It still makes me sick today. Now, folks, you don't know how many, there's a lot of, of responses here that say, well, you must have deserved it. You must have sinned in the past. And because of the sin in your past, in your own past, or even your ancestors' past, now, there's some things that do happen, but not this. And for this pastor, shame, shame on this pastor, um, or whoever this person was, maybe it wasn't a pastor, but you must have sinned and earned it. Um, why would we think someone would want to come to the church if those are the words that are being shared? Okay. Um, here's one. You can't go to heaven with all those tattoos and a hair and that haircut. <laughs> Jeff Stubbs. He's in what? He's in Wisconsin, uh, but we knew him as a kid in Chicago, and uh, he he's tatted up. I'm going to tell you, but he loves Jesus. His daddy died on a motorcycle wreck. I was part of the service we did for him when I, after we'd moved back and went back, and uh, I mean. The ministry that that family's done has been amazing, but uh, we go and we pull out a passage in the Old Testament that says something about tattoos, and we don't look at the culture, and we don't look at the context, and we don't understand why it said what it said, and then we apply it in 2022 right now to someone who's got a tattoo. And so uh, that's problematic. A little farther down on this same page, um, there's no point in you praying, this, this lady was told. <coughs> Because of your sin, God won't hear you. This was from the pastor, and I stopped praying for a long, long time. Yeah. There's no point in you praying because of your sin. It seems to me because of our sin, we better be praying. That's the stupidest thing I ever said. That's dumb crap. Yeah. It's stupid. 
Matt, how is that helpful to people? You on the other side, you all right? Uh, set a little context here. This gal's parents were killed in a, in a car accident seven years ago. Uh, the gal's mom was a pastor of the church where she was attending, and, and she, uh, she also does some uh, certified lay ministry and so forth. Seven years ago, when my parents died in a car accident, someone congratulated me on my promotion to succeed my mom as the pastor of whatever church that they were at. How's that working out? Congratulations on your promotion. Meanwhile, both your parents are dead. And she's still struggling to the day. She's still dealing with counseling and so forth. I mean, um, I met her years ago. I can't even, uh, in Texas, I think. And, and uh, anyways, golly. Um, you all right here? Can I share a few more? Um, a family member told the 10-year-old boy whose mother was killed by a drunk driver that God needed her more than he did. Don't say that. Don't ever say that. God doesn't, God doesn't need anything. God's got it all. I mean, he, 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 he will receive us into himself, of course. But that also is one of the dumbest things to ever say, that God needs the child or, or needs the person more than you do. So that 10-year-old now is going around thinking God's just yanking everybody, letting everybody get killed because he needs them more than I do, than we do. You hear that? And so, now I don't know, you know how old this kid is now, but you don't think that affected this boy? Um, a priest said to this one guy, you are going to hell. You were created out of lust. Your father committed adultery. There is no salvation for you ever. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks. It's messy. It's messy. I mean, he's a pastor now, thankfully. I mean, this guy. I mean, he, he, he didn't listen to him, thankfully, but wow, that's pretty tough. Um, here's a person I know fairly well. Um, and this person said, well, this was said behind my back, but I was certainly meant to hear it. Why is she coming to our church? She's nothing but a drunk and a loudmouth. I, I hate it. I know you're watching. You're welcome here. Long drive, but you're welcome. I just want you to... Okay, so we have some drunks and loudmouths. When have you not been a drunk, to be honest with you, at some point, or a loudmouth, or oops, somewhere else in your life? Would you not be welcome in the church, and should the church not be the place where the doors are open to be receiving people who are dealing with the stuff that causes them to drink anyway? Just a thought. We had a miscarriage, and someone that told us, it's good it happened early in the pregnancy. Eight weeks. No, it's not good. Miscarriages are never good anytime. There's a whole lot more to this story. I'm not going to read it all, but man, it was not, not helpful at all. Not helpful at all. And, and they're still dealing with it. <clears throat> um, if you had prayed more, you wouldn't be suffering from depression. Ask King David that. Go read the Psalms. See how that's working out. Um, there's, there's all sorts of issues that, you know, that's where Kathleen needs to step in and, and others who, who, who deal with that more than I do, because I'm not, I'm not a counselor in that sense, especially when you get into clinical depression. I'd rather you break your arm and I take you to the hospital and we put a cast on and therefore we have something in some way to help you get better. But depression is one of those things that, you know, my brother at one time went through terrible, terrible depression. It was, the, it, it was so bad for him to go to the refrigerator and get a glass of orange juice was a victory. That makes no sense to me. It, but I, you know, I wasn't going to go say, what's the matter with you? You know, he's doing well now. Thank you very much. But man, one more. All right. Dumbest thing ever said to me. Uh, where she had just lost her 16-year-old daughter 
And they said, well, you still have your other daughter. <laughs> That's somebody from our church, even. Um, man. So, you think about those things, and you think, oh, golly. It's no wonder that James said this. This should not be. This should not be. <clears throat> it should not be. We can do better. We must do better. We must do better. And when I say we, a collective we, across the whole church, capital C, you know, when we say in the Apostles' Creed, the, the Holy Catholic Church, that means the church universal. The church needs to do a better job. Because why would anyone ever want to be a part of the church when the church is saying these things? Why? Reminder, don't be a jerk. <laughs> don't be a jerk. We have to be careful. That means despicably obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. Don't be a despicable, obnoxious, detestable person. People will run from you like the plague. Uh, let's be those where people would respond to the words that we have. Or better yet, the ministry of presence that we have. I was texting someone a couple nights ago who's going through a tough time and, and is dealing with a, a family member who is, uh, who is who's, uh, on her last day, in her last day. She was really struggling and, and just, I mean, I could tell in just the, the text itself. And said, I just don't even know how to pray anymore. I just don't, I'm just, I'm just, uh, just feeling sick. I can't eat. Don't know, don't know how to pray. Don't know what to pray and whatever. I said, look, here, you just be there like you are. You just be present, just like you are. That's it. You be there. We will take the load off of you. We will pray on your behalf. We will take that, and we will pray for you so you don't even have to worry about praying and thinking about the right thing to pray. We'll just pray for you. And you should have seen the emojis of tears that came back. <laughs> Ministry of presence matters, just to be present with someone. And it's better off most of the time not to say anything. We've got to be careful. So wouldn't it be great if others spoke of the good ways that we at Asbury speak, of the good behavior uh, that they observe of us who call ourselves Christians? Wouldn't that be what we want? I believe that's what we want. I believe that's what God wants. And I believe that's what people need to hear, that they matter. You know, that, that, that we're, we're a people who love God and and love others, and we're trying not to do dumb crap, you know? We're trying not to be jerks. That the way we talk and speak would, would cause others to take notice. So maybe they, they would say, hey, there's, there's something different about those Asbarians. I want what they have. I want what they have. So folks, let's not be jerks. You on the other side of the screen, you here, let, let's not be jerks. Jerks don't lead people to Jesus. They turn them away. So let's not be jerks. All right? Let's say and do the right thing because of the one who receives us as we are to be who he wants us to be. Let's pray. God, we come before you. And we thank you for your word. And, and this stuff is just, it's troublesome. Because uh, we as the church claim to have our act together so often, and yet, wow, we don't. So God, forgive us when we're jerks. Forgive us. Help us by your Holy Spirit uh, to be transformed. Change us. Change our hearts, O oh God, that we would represent you well and represent you well in all we say and do. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as Russell comes to lead us in this last song, Take My Life and Let It Be.
that I don't do the things I know I should do. So I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress, and I pray you are too, and together let us be the church that Jesus calls us to be. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. 